D-Y-O-R. I don't know how many of you are familiar with that, but it is an acronym that stands for Do Your Own Research. It's super common within the world of crypto, but it's common in a bunch of different areas when people will throw out you know, possible uh, stocks or something like that. They'll say something to the effect of, you know, this isn't financial advice, you know, consult your financial advisor, do your own research, etc. And you're never going to hear me say consult your financial advisor because financial advisors, frankly, mostly don't know shit. They're like just salespeople really is what they are. Uh, so I think it's this stupid thing that gets perpetu uh, perpetuated and shouldn't around, you know, consult a financial advisor. Do not consult a financial advisor. It's a bad idea most of the time. Uh, find good co-investors, do your own research. And so today we're gonna to talk about do your own research because a lot of people throw this around and then don't do their own research. And frankly, really don't have a real concept of what doing your own research means. So we're gonna talk about what you can do to do better research and hopefully avoid getting screwed over. So let's dive in. Before we do, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, hit the all notification bell. Thank you for support. If you'd like help with investing abroad, forming companies, opening bank accounts, relocating abroad, paying the lowest legal amount of tax possible, getting second passports, second residencies, citizenships, etc., please reach out to me. You can book a call calendly.com forward slash Michael Dash Rosmer. There's a link in the description below, as always, and you can send a message to our websites offshorecitizen.net and offshorecapitalist.com. All right. So uh, do your own research. So yeah, uh, this came up a little bit. I was doing a Twitter spaces around the time that the Terra Luna thing was crashing. And it was really apparent how all kinds of people had bought in without having any idea of how the mechanisms worked with uh, USDT Luna. They had not done their own research. And yet this is the thing that gets thrown around and taught a lot is, hey, do your own research. Well, you know, people didn't understand the mechanisms. And it was really interesting to observe that even after things had gone way down, I mentioned that I shorted it and did very well. Uh, you know, for me, it was really apparent because I understood the mechanisms that it was invariably going to zero. And there was people trying to long the bounce and saying, hey, listen, you know, I want, to, it could go up to a lot and literally losing millions of dollars uh, doing this, really ridiculous. And they didn't, hadn't done their own research. They didn't understand it. And that's a problem. Now, here's the thing that I find really, really frustrating when people talk about doing research. I'll sometimes talk to people, and this is really common in say the conspiracy theory circle, is I've been researching. And what I've been researching means I've been Googling and reading people's opinions about this. Now they don't, it's not expressed as opinions, it's expressed as this is how things are. But reading what people have to say is not doing your own research, okay? That's nonsense. That's just taking opinion polls. And here's a really disturbing thing. What I have noticed is People's uh, views tend to correlate very strongly to the media they consume. Now, this is awful because the media is terrible, right? Media is a horrible source of information. Generally, if somebody tells you you should be watching the news, probably disregard that person. They probably don't know what they're talking about. If you want, if you're saying, hey, listen, I want to stay up to date on sentiment, and the reason that I'm paying attention to this is to understand sentiment, then great. That might give you a good sense of sentiment. But if you're actually trying to understand the world, Media is a horrible way to do it. I'll give you a quick little example of this. So you may read some articles where some supposed expert is, you know, stating something. Let's say they're a business leader. Well, quick anecdote about this. So my one company, we have a uh, PR firm working for us right now, doing various different things. We've been going through media training and I've been talking to reporters and doing interviews and things like this. And so one of the things that will happen is reporters want sources on information. And so they'll ping you and say, hey, can you s give some information? Now, the PR firm understands I'm busy, our team is busy, etc. I'm the main person who has to talk. So what they will do in order to make it easier for me is they will prepare uh, some piece and then just send it to me for approval. And through observing this, I can totally see how so much politically correct nonsense uh, gets published. Because what they'll do, there was a recent one they sent me, quite a lengthy, like a written interview thing. And don't get me wrong, I'm sure they're very well intentioned and things like this, but they're not the subject matter expert. And so what ends up happening is they write something out that it's just what you would expect as politically correct speak. Oh, of course, da 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 da, you know, something that uh, it's the popular jargon of the time. It's not real, but it's the popular jargon of the time. And so, anyway, I couldn't stand having that uh, 
put out there, so I took the hour or whatever to go and rewrite it. But, but the point is, you can see how this happens, right? Somebody doesn't have time, they're using a PR firm, really their objective is to get as much uh, exposure out there as possible, fair. The PR firm is doing something to save them time, fair. You know, it costs a lot of money to hire them as is, and so why not? Well, the problem is, the quality of information that gets communicated is mostly just noise, not signal. So when we're trying to do our own research, what do we want to do? I would say, in my opinion, there's two key things. And again, it depends on what you're researching, right? If you're trying to understand sentiment, if you're just you know, saying, hey, listen, is this oversold? Uh, do I want to buy in? That's one thing. If you're saying, okay, I want to, for instance, uh, you know, know what people are likely to vote. Okay, you know, maybe checking in with people could be one thing, although we tend to exist within bubbles of people, so it may not be that accurate. The bigger thing is form mental models of how things work. I'm gonna do a video in the future about how to think independently, because uh, I think that's a really big deal. Uh, and the other one is put yourself in a position where you go to the actual source. And by the actual source, I don't mean the person's opinion, okay? Somebody talking about the source is not the source. The source is the, per the first-hand information or the direct information in place. So I talked about this a little while ago of don't listen to what somebody says about what somebody else says. Go and read what the somebody else says. <laughs> go and listen to what the other somebody else says. Don't trust the media to tell you what some politician said or what business person said or what whatever person said. Go and look at what they actually said. And ideally, go and do it uh, as first-hand, uncut, broad, so you get the context as possible, right? They might have some interpretations on it where they explain it too. That's also possibly useful. Now, of course, you can't always trust people, but it's better than listening to what somebody else had to say about it. Uh, number two is if you can go in and you can get some piece of direct data, right? So uh, let's use an example. One of the things I heard was, TikTok, the Chinese government is stealing people's information, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this is terrible. Now, I heard uh, Bill Gates uh, interviewed about this, and he was like, what are you talking about? Like, you know, you can just uh, check and find out if that's the case. Somebody's like, oh, but how is it hidden? He's like, no, like, if you understand software and you understand development, et cetera, it's pretty obvious. You can tell whether this is the case or not. It's not like there's some magic thing that the Chinese have that nobody else has that allows you to report that. Now, of course, most people don't have the expertise to do this. And you may not be in a position where you can get somebody else to investigate it for you. Uh, but the point is, the actual information would not be somebody's opinion on it. It would be, hey, listen, we've checked in the code, and here's what it is, right? You can check the code for yourself. You can go and you can see. So I think that's a really, really important thing. What's next? Uh, if you're looking at, say, details of a company, right? You want to research, is a company going to perform well, etc. Well, you can go and actually read their 10Ks. So it's interesting to me how few people, how many people will uh, read the annual reports of a company when they're going to invest in the company. Now, again, you're trusting some proxy, so it's not perfect, but it's something. Going and trying the product. How many people buy a, shares in a company without using the product? Hypothetically, this is not really a great idea, right? It's much better if you can use the product and you can say, hey, the product's great or the product's not. This is one thing to say about Tesla, is for all the criticisms that somebody might level against Elon Musk, when the Model S came out, it was the best rated car by Car and Driver magazine in the history of automobiles. Not just electric car, the best car, period. You talk to people who own uh, Teslas, they love them. You get into a car, you know, you can experience what it's like. That's first-hand data. Now, does that tell you necessarily that you know, the car is profitably manufactured? No, it's not. So you have to look into that separately. But these are important, uh, important things. Getting to the root of it. In the case of, say, in the case of uh, uh, Terra Luna and uh, UST, you could see how the mechanism actually works. Now, you can start by reading the white paper. How many people read the white paper before they bought it? Probably almost none. Um, how many people went and did a deep dive into the code? Probably almost none. How many, you know, what do they do? They go and they listen to some people on Twitter or some people on Telegram or Discord or they Google or they watch some YouTube or et cetera saying, hey, this is the greatest thing. Okay, go and do your own research. It's the value of doing your own research over time, I think cannot be really underestimated. Not just because it will help you 
make better decisions and have conviction when to hold and when not to and things like this. And by the way, this doesn't just go for uh, investments. This goes for lots of things. But it also has the massive advantage that it helps to build your skills of thinking, right? So the next part is, I think, really, really important, and I don't hear people do it enough. Build mental models for how things work. So the causal relationships between things, what are the levers that get pulled that if this lever gets pulled, there's something else that happens and there's ripple effects. And this helps us to examine second, third order consequences and make better decisions about what's going on. So again, a lot of people will take just very surface level thinking about something without having a mental model for, okay, what are the drivers behind that? And in addition to what the drivers are, what is it that is going to uh, be the effect of the thing that's being affected? So I notice this a lot with somebody who will have an opinion. The market's going to go up. The market's going to go down. Inflation's going to go up. Inflation's going to go down. Opinions are really not worth anything, right? It's that old expression. Op opinions are like assholes. Everyone has them, and they all stink. So opinions are not worth so much. The much more interesting thing is why do you believe that? What is it that is behind in the core fundamentals of how things work that will cause what you think to happen to happen? Now, in doing this, one of the most important things, I think, uh, I got a, there's a, a lady, I forget what her name is. Anyway, great uh, astrophysicist on YouTube, probably one of the ones with the bigger followings. Um, she made a really interesting point, I thought. She said, predictions are highly overrated. Not to say that making predictions is highly overrated, but getting predictions right is highly overrated. And this was a, an interesting aha for me. It's like, okay, hang on a minute. So how, did, how is it that predictions are overrated? What does that mean? And she said, well, here's the thing. If you make enough predictions, then you're gonna naturally get some right. It's just the nature of probabilities. What's much more useful is to see what percentage of the overall data can be explained through your theory. And so if you think about that, this is why we try to falsify things, right? The principle in science is falsification. So if I can't falsify a theory, then it's not a valid theory. It's just pseudoscience. And if I can falsify it, then I should be looking to disprove it. So whatever I think is true, I should be looking for counter arguments, counter examples, and saying, okay, does it fit the broad data set? Instead of saying, oh, hey, like, what is our brain going to do? Our brain is a miser. Our brain wants to not work. It wants to not have to process things. We're, try we're energy conservation machines because we're trying to resist entropy. And because of this, we want to end up in a situation where if we ask our brain a question, the brain will give us an answer. That answer does not necessarily have to be correct. It will make sense to the brain. It's the nature of the brain that it has to make sense for it to be satisfying for us, but it does not make it accurate. So we have to become comfortable with the discomfort of being in a state of mystery. And we need to say, okay, but what about this? And what about this? And what about this? And throw out a broad range of possibilities to see if the theory that we've developed, our model for how the world works, uh, actually conforms to reality. And maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Maybe it does to a certain extent, and that could be a useful extent. For example, Newton's theories happen to be, you know, inaccurate. We know that Einstein improved on Newton, but Newton's theories are good enough that in most cases they're still useful and we still use them today in a lot of different situations. We don't go to Einsteinian physics in order to explain, you know, traffic accidents because it's just not relevant. Might as well just use Newtonian physics, it's easier. Even though the Newtonian physics is slightly off, right? So you might come up with a very useful theory that is very helpful and has some probabilistic value to it, but on the other hand, you're in a situation where it's not totally accurate, but it can still be useful. So I wouldn't discard usefulness. Anyway, the whole point of this whole thing is just to say, I think it's very, very important, and I don't see nearly enough people doing it, to build mental models of how things work. Rather than sporadic opinions, constructing models that suggest, here is how this will influence this, which will influence this, and then st stress testing those, and combining that with actually going to the source, right? Trying to get to the real information, which is hard, right? The reason why people don't do it is because it's hard. And maybe that brings us to the last thing, which is there can be a lot of value in narrowing how much stuff we focus on. Uh, it's better to have a deep knowledge of a few things than, you know, superficial knowledge of no things, you know? It's, uh, it's better than, it's better to have like some degree there. 
And so anyway, we'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, if there's some examples of cases where you've done research that you found something that you thought was true to be false uh, or vice versa, and some case where you know maybe you've observed people uh, doing a poor job of doing their own research or not doing their own research, we'd love to hear some examples. There's probably some great tips that I haven't thought of that you could share and people might enjoy. So leave them in the comments below and I will look forward to seeing you on the next video.